These are the things that only the experts seem to know. This is how I know you're entry level. I will not hire people who do not get this. A heads up that I'm teaming up with Motion again to bring you a free Make Ads That Convert training. And this time I'm going to be taking the virtual stage with Savannah, Jess from Fireteam, and Mariella to bring you a four-part series about how you can make better ad creatives in 2024. This is going to be happening from May 23rd to June 20th. You're not going to want to miss it. Be sure to sign up in the description bar below. But today's video is about the seven things that only experts seem to know about Facebook ads. And this is specifically for creative strategists or media buyers who have a heavy role in planning the creative for the platform. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, number one, they track the right data. And specifically what I'm looking for here is an understanding of primary KPIs versus storytelling KPIs. So they understand that there are only a few metrics that are really going to determine a winning ad versus an ad that's not winning. However, they can look at secondary KPIs like video hook and hold and click through rate and begin to tell a larger story about why specific creatives might be winning or why they might not be performing as well. They also understand when and why you might use a third party platform like a North Beam or a Triple Whale. And hint, hint, I only find that much bigger brands really need this type of tool, especially when you have multiple customer acquisition channels. Channels. That's when that kind of stuff is really important. But candidly, only the experts truly know that the data will only get you so far, which is why they actually know the proper way to analyze a creative. So I actually recently made this video, which was for anyone that ever gave you a wall of data like this, pointed out a winner and said, yeah, I mean, I guess this is the winning creative. Yikes. Truthfully, an analysis should actually look a whole lot more like this. You should have your testing criteria, which will include a hypothesis on why you think a creative is going to win before you even test it, and the number of variants that you're testing and the variables within those variants. And as far as your actual analysis, you should be comparing that to other top performing creatives in the ad account. What type of scale potential you see from a creative if you do see initial good performance coming out of it. And you're able to determine inside the actual creative test, hey, which one of these variants was the winner and why based on messaging, imagery, format. They're also looking into age breakdowns to further uncover why an ad might potentially have good or bad performance. And of course, they're looking at those next steps and it's not just as much as like, yeah, scale it up in the ad account or turn it off. They're also looking at what type of learnings they can take from the creative and apply it to their creative roadmap. Now, something that I only see from experts is that they are actually really comfortable with the subjectivity of creative. And honestly, this is the hardest thing to teach media buyers who want to become creative strategists because they're so married to the data that they're afraid to say something that might be from more qualitative data as opposed to quantitative. And qualitative data are going to be things like ad comments, maybe some tickets from your CX or even certain type of reviews on the website. Essentially, experts are ready and willing to throw a few subjective reasons out to why a creative may or may not have performed. Number three, these people are platform experts, not necessarily ads manager experts. And what I mean by this is that they understand and use Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook like an organic user. So they are used to spotting organic trends. They have a few favorite creators that aren't Mr. Beast. And they know how to track competitor trends in terms of what they're doing organically as well as what they're doing on an actual ad creative. And because they actually utilize the platform like an actual user, they are able to zoom in on organic trends, competitor trends, and creator trends of a specific market as well as a specific brand. Honestly, I find that it's a huge red flag if the people that I'm working with don't like social media or aren't actively invested in Instagram or TikTok on the organic side to some extent. In fact, I will not hire or work with people like this. I know it's very cool to say you don't like social media even though you run a lot of ads. I just think it's kind of lame. Number four, these people do understand the basics of the inner workings of Ads Manager. They understand why to test on a broad audience, for instance, because interests and lookalikes and targeting just really doesn't work anymore. Facebook is deprecating it. And, you know, 
it's the most scalable audience. If something's gonna work on broad, then it's going to be a lot more scalable than something that's based on a lookalike or an interest. They're also gonna understand how to develop a creative testing methodology that will be reflected inside of Ads Manager. So they're gonna understand, okay, here's how many variants we need to test based on the budget. And they're also gonna be able to make sure, hey, let's make sure this test actually got enough amount of ad spend to make sure whether or not it was worth it. But they don't feel the need to have the same amount of spend across all the variants, right? Essentially, experts are technical enough to make sure that the framework and structure is sound. But I'd say they're way better storytellers than they are spreadsheet masters. Number five, experts understand the power of creative diversity. In fact, when I look inside the ad accounts of expert creative strategists and media buyers, they tend to have a lot more net new creative tests versus iterative tests or rather their iterations actually tend to look like net new creatives. And that's because they're borrowing from the bigger swing learnings. They might be borrowing from a certain angle or messaging point and testing that across different formats. I think one of the most dangerous places that a brand can fall into is if all of your creatives end up materially looking the same. So essentially you do this quant test and you see, oh, all of these kind of look similar. If I see this happening inside of an ad account, it's a for sure sign that you're a junior and not an expert. And that's because you're really too afraid to try anything new and you want to seem data driven so you only do things that work which puts you into this iterative testing hell. Number six, experts know a lot about product strategy. In fact, when they're developing their overall creative testing methodology, they're really looking out for products or certain features that lend themselves to being super problem solution oriented because they know that that's how you can get more people to convert quicker. They also can take a look at a product suite and say, hey, which types of products might lend themselves to being attractive to consumers so that we can increase AOV? I just find that experts actually spend a lot more time talking about, hey, how can we increase the overall lifetime value of a specific market? So they want to try adding subscriptions or they're trying to increase AOV. So they're actually trying to increase the size of the cart. And essentially experts are able to look at a product suite and do that. They're not just taking that direction from someone else. And number seven, they understand what the creative journey actually looks like. I think it's a huge fallacy and honestly a huge disservice to what we do as media buyers and creative strategists to think that the customer journey looks like, oh, we target an ad to someone who's never seen this before and they click on the ad and then they go through and buy immediately. That almost never happens. Which is why I really loved this recent Twitter post by Sarah Levenger, my good friend, where she goes through what the customer journey actually looks like. And spoiler alert, it's a lot longer than we think it is and people just really aren't thinking about our brand all the time. Social media and these platforms do not happen in a volume. They happen in the broader context of someone's lives. And again, this is why the expert can look at, hey, how can we lean more into the power of desire to get more people to act more quickly? And how can we lean into more problem solution orientations? And how can we lean into more problem solutions to drive more of that direct response to essentially make it seem more urgent in the context of people's everyday lives? That is something that experts think about and are you know generally not conversations that I have with more junior members of the team. And that's it. I'm curious to hear what you guys think, and especially if you think that I am missing out on one of the telltale signs of an expert. I think we all really do get lost in the sauce of like a certain structure and a certain attribution and certain numbers and data. And more recently, I found that people who can speak to that more subjective nature of the platform, of creators, of ad creative, those are the people who I find are doing really well and are actually making a bigger impact inside of ad accounts. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.